Early Massachusetts win came back in 1963. Of course, earlier this season at the cage, UMass winning 77-66, and the game wasn't as score as close as the score indicated. No, the Rutgers pretty much was out of the game ever since the uh, about the 10-minute point. Dave Worthy controls the tip, and Mark Redden gets a start at point guard. Wetzel felt that Redden did a good job against West Virginia, and so he'll get the start over freshman Damon Santiago. Well, he's been playing well as of late, so whenever you, a team like this, you want to go with an experienced point guard. Wetzel probably feels that Damon will get, since he's a freshman, he'll probably get a little rattled. Jamal Phillips has it go in and out off the nice feed by Chuck Weiler. And it probably takes them all a little bit of time to really get us up in gear. Barbie dishes inside, up and in on the follow by Harper Williams. That's one thing Ruckus is going to have to do. They're going to have to box out inside and get these big guys off the board. Chuck Weiler and Jamal Phillips have to do a job on the front line. They have to be physical. They can't afford for Weiler to get in foul trouble. As Williams rejects, but it's Weiler collecting to Mike Jones. Off glass, no. Phillips kept it alive and went out of bounds off the hand of Mike Jones. A aggressive play early on. Rutgers needs to calm down. Seems like they're a little edgy right now. They need to calm down and take better shots. Anton Brown, a senior from Columbia, South Carolina, handles the point guard duties. You know, He's played well against Rutgers, Roy. A double-double, 14 points, 10 assists in their last meeting. Brown. Looking for Williams. Harper Williams. Left-handed shot, no, and Chuck Weiler cleans the glass. And you see what Massachusetts is trying to do is pound the ball inside because they, Ruckus really doesn't have anyone past Phillips and Weiler who can handle anyone inside. Worthy for three. No good. And knocked out of bounds by Jimmy McCoy. I think that was a little bit quick shot for Rutgers that time. Move the ball around. Try not to get into a quick game. Fresh 45 for the Scarlet Knights. Jones. And Worthy. Dishing it off to Mike Jones. Good look to Jones, and it's 2-2. The penetration by Worthy. Good look to Jones. And there's the quick shot and quick miss by Harper Williams. The crowd knows it was an air ball. There's Jamal Phillips. Just nicks the iron. He's going to be a little off. He didn't play last game, been struggling with a little uh, strips throat. So he's going to be a little off to start off to get his game back together. They did practice last night. The Knights have a 9 o'clock practice after the Rutgers women's game. Jim McCoy open off the back of the iron. Both teams are starting out slow. Worthy. Took it right at Tony Barbie, and Barbie with the foul. That was good that Rutgers attacked their deep, retreating defense, but you don't want to get into an up and, up and down game with this team. And they, now, they definitely have more firepower. And now quickly checking in, number 15, the freshman from Atlantic City, Lou Rowe. This is going to be a good matchup, see Lou against Phillips. See who, I mean, these are two top freshmen, so we see who's going to get the better. John Calipari said, hey, when Jamal Phillips is in the game, I'm going to have Lewis Rowe right on him. We're going to see who's the real freshman of the year in the Atlantic 10. Herndon, who can sky. Outlets, but Worthy picks it off. Scoop to the hoop. No. And controlled by Anton Brown. Worthy did a little Moses Malone move right there. Threw the ball up and tried to get his own rebound. On the baseline, McCoy pumps and fouled. Uh, Tom, Rutgers coach Bob Winslow is trying to call, is trying to say that he was a clear out, but I think that was just a good play that time. Foul goes on Mark Redden, his first, the team's first. Wenzel couldn't believe the call, and that will send Jim McCoy to the line. You know, early on, if there's a questionable call, some like coaches will really get vocal about the call as McCoy hits the first one, just to set the tone for maybe a call they might try to get later on. And Jim McCoy, a 64% free throw shooter, makes the first. The senior from Pittsburgh. Seventh in the Atlantic 10 scoring race, averaging 16.1 points a game. 
John Calipari says he's been playing his best basketball of the season the last two weeks, and he gives UMass a 4-2 lead. Now they trap Redden in the backcourt. Little run and jump, ally, ally of um, North Carolina. Jones! Didn't want to use glass and maybe should have. Brown. They work it down low to McCoy. Herndon reversing the ball to Anton Brown. He can knock it down from three-point range, and he does. Yeah, very tough shot. I tell you, you always got to know what the men are because they have four guys out there who have over 1,000 points. So these guys are explosive scorers. 7-2, big possession for the Scarlet Knights. Worthy tries to answer from three-point range. No. Jones, offensive rebound, working inside for Phillips. And Jamal Phillips is fouled on the baseline. It's one luxury that Rutgers did not have the other night against St. Peter's. We're, uh, Phillips inside, just causing a lot, taking up a lot of space, causing a lot of havoc for the big men. Foul goes on number 34, Will Herndon. And John Calipari. Just 32 years old. Took over the program at 28 as we see Alvin Rich coming in replacing Mike Jones. Alvin Rich who provides offense off the bench, the junior from Queens, New York. Yeah, he, and he's a streaky shooter. Either he's hot or, he, or he's cold. And Phillips, a 55% free throw shooter with the kind bounce on his first attempt. We call that shooter's touch. Short on the second, and it's 7-3. Quickly, this is Mike Williams, number 10 at guard. Mike Williams takes it alone. Wilder rebounds. And Redden runs the attack. Rich, not bashful. And a good rebound. Position established inside by Herndon. I thought that was a bad shot. Rich just got in the game. He puts up a quick shot. McCoy. His rebound, and Phillips finds Worthy ahead of the pack, and Steve lost control. It was tipped, says Tommy Lopes. Here's Barbie for three. And you can see it. Rutgers possibly needs to take a timeout or just call a set play to slow the guys down and try to break some of the momentum. Because right now, the momentum is definitely in UMass's favor. 10-3, UMass. Worthy thought he had the open jam. Here's the screen by Phillips. Worthy takes it hard to the glass and is fouled. The foul goes on Barbie. That's his second. And Worthy's doing a good job of taking, taking the ball to the basket. And Donnell Lumpkin checks in for Bob Wenzel. Instant O. Been a good score as of late. See if he can hold on to that because they're definitely going to need his scoring tonight. Donnell Lumpkin, the junior from South Brunswick at 6'8", a lean 200 pounds. You know, if they call Vinny Johnson the microwave, what can we call Donnell Lumpkin? The toaster? <laughs> <laughs> not bad, not bad. As Worthy attempts to. Steve Worthy shoots 73% from the charity strike. Coming off a 25-point performance against St. Peter's here on Saturday. Makes them both, and there's a timeout on the floor with the score. Because everybody was on their one side of the floor and left Barbie wide open. I think I can hit one of those. Well, let's not get carried away. <laughs> I know you could have probably jammed this one, though, as Steve Worthy was ahead of the pack, and Mike Williams hustled to get oh, back and to the play. Mike, Mike Williams, he went to that side to slap it down there, knowing exactly Steve Worthy's going to bring it to his left side to try to slam, and he anticipated that perfect. Also in the game for Massachusetts is number 42, Kennard Robinson. Steve Worthy. Completing two free throws. Neither team lighting it up, and Rutgers a woeful one for 12. I mean, I think that's an all-time low in college basketball right there, 8%. <laughs> Rutgers picks up man-to-man, -man, full court. And McCoy it off to Mike Williams, and Williams able to get it across the half-court line. They swing it in the corner. Down low, Lewis Rowe 
And he's fouled inside by Alvin Rich. It's one thing, they, they blew the ball up very quickly, looked for an open man, a lot of passing around, saw opening inside, took the ball inside, and got the foul called. Rutgers is going to have to break, break that chain of sequence. They're going to combat these guys. John Calipari and Bob Wenzel, both fourth-year coaches. At the line, Lewis Rowe, the freshman from Atlantic City, he makes the first. Twice this season, the Atlantic 10 Rookie of the Week. Averaging seven points, six rebounds, and a 68% free-throw shooter. Ah, can't convert to second, and it's 11-5. And Rich traveled as he tried to pull up. Time for a new pair of sneakers. No grip. So the Rutgers turnover in Massachusetts now looking for their motion attack. Robinson at 6'10", 215. What a physical player. This morning at the shoot-around, John Calipari warned his team as it went out of bounds off the arm of Alvin Rich. He told his upperclassmen and his starters, if you come out and you're still thinking about that Temple win, I'm going to the young guys. I'm going to the freshmen and the subs, and I'll do it one minute into the game if I have to. Yeah, something to motivate the players, because after a big win from by the te on Temple, uh, they can come out a little flat. Jerome Malloy, number 24, missing. It's an offensive rebound. Here goes McCoy with the right hand. No, tipped up and in. And it's Kennard Robinson with the follow. The key thing about that is how many people for UMass was in the paint. Damon Santiago at point for the Scarlet Knights as Rich holds. Santiago, a freshman from the Bronx, wearing number 11. Rutgers down by eight. And there's the reach and foul called out high on Jim McCoy. His first, the fourth team foul in the Minutemen. And Mike Jones, the captain from Morrisville, Pennsylvania, back in the lineup, and he replaces Steve Worthy. Well, Jones had a very good game against St. Peter's, going to the offensive glass, and he needs a lot more of that. Jones had 15 points, eight assists, six rebounds, five blocks. The blocks and assists were career best. Here's Rich in the lane. Won't go. Tipped up by Daryl Smith. And it's rebounded by Rowe, who loses to Alvin Rich. Rutgers can't buy one in the paint. Sometimes it's, sometimes it's like that. You're a little antsy. You know you got a good opponent. You want to play well. And you just, because of nerves, you can't get the ball in the basket. But Robinson, the junior from the Bronx, banks it home. He's got four points. And the Minutemen lead by 10. Bob calling out a set play here. A little twirl. We see what that is. Looks like the weave. Santiago dishing inside. Rich rejected by Robinson. Jones inside to Smith, who throws up a wild shot. What happened is Rutgers men are underneath. They're out of position to put up strong shots. Jim McCoy got away with one. Here's Mike Williams working on Mike Jones, and it's Jones picking up the foul. I don't know, that just looked like good aggressive defense that time, not letting Mitchell go where he wants to go. Tommy Scott calls the foul, and Wenzel comes back with Chuck Wilder. Fresh bodies for the Minutemen as Harper Williams is back in, so is Will Herndon. John Calipari has these Minutemen off to their second best start since 1970-71. That year, a team with Julius Irving went 20 and three to start the season. Barbie has it deflected by Lumpkin, but Mike Williams saves. Williams hands off to Harper Williams. You got a foul for being over the back. Tommy Lopes came in from beyond the three-point arc to call it. On Harper Williams, his first five on the Minutemen. And now UMass shows full court pressure. There's Jamal Phillips, as we said, coming off the strep throat. 
They probably monitor him early, give a, a couple minutes here and there so he gets his legs on them. Rutgers breaks the press, Santiago. And here's one of the problems that Santiago has had, a shooting guard adapting to the point guard spot. Didn't get lumped in the ball where he needed it. Chuck Weiler can't get it to go down. Out of bounds off Tony Barbee. Barbee look, looks a little disgusted, but that was a good call. Good move by Jones to knock it off his leg. Just rolled out of bounds. He thought he probably should have got a foul there. But the referees haven't changed their mind in a long time. And it will be Jones to inbound. With 12-11 left in the first half, our PSEG Game of the Week, Rutgers. And the Massachusetts Minutemen. Lumpkin way out top as it blocked by Jerome Malloy, the 24. That's not the shot you want Lumpkin taking. You don't want him really putting the ball on the floor out near the three-point arc. No, I think that was a crazy shot. I think he realizes that, too. You know, you're in the sandwich between two players and trying to take a shot. Tough one to get. Even that shot was even crazy. Beat you know, set. Lumpkin off the front of the rim. Here's Jerome Malloy. He tries some three-point range, and it's Herndon with the rebound. Now Anton Brown trying to answer. And Brown with his soft touch. He's got five points, and the Minutemen lead by 12. Mass is getting every loose ball. And Rutgers has been unable to score inside. For me, I would take, take this possession, slow it down, take some time off this clock. If they go down and score again, I'll call a timeout to try to regroup my troops. Here's Jamal Phillips. Over Robinson, no good. And the Minutemen push it. Brown from the elbow. It's good. And the Minutemen were practicing that shot all morning in their shoot around. He's got seven points now. And it's a 19 5 Massachusetts up there because he has a great freshman, freshman prop in, rated maybe like 18th in the, in the nation. And he's continually bringing in real good players. So he, got it, he started something up there, and it should be good basketball coming out of UMass. And Bob Wessel returning to his alma mater, immediately turning things around. He'll be spoiling people making the NCAA in that first season. Following it up. Wow. Now I thought that eight was low. Now we have five. Rutgers is just not shooting well at all. There's Jamal Phillips, who leads the Scarlet Knights in shooting percentage from the floor. Fouled inside by Kennard Robinson, so Phillips will go to the line to shoot two. And before this 14-1 run, uh, the last pass by Rutgers was the free throw by Phillips. Jamal Phillips, who's shooting 54% from the floor. Interesting, really, three candidates for freshman of the year in the Atlantic 10. Jamal Phillips, Lewis Rowe from UMass, and Demetrius Poles from South Jersey playing for St. Joseph's who we saw earlier in our PSE&G series. But the lid remains on the basket for Rutgers. You know, some of Rutgers' best um, shots haven't been bad shots. Some of them have been bad, but some of them just haven't fallen. So they need to continue to take some of the good shots and not maybe not press as much. Malloy has it intercepted by Worthy. And Mike Jones, but the Minutemen get back. Worthy gets Robinson in the air, and now Mike Jones will sort out the offense. That's a great job that time. Worthy saw it. He didn't have anything. Jones saw it. He didn't have anything. They backed it back out and showed some patience there. Jones. Worthy. With Harper Williams guarding him, and a foul will go on Harper Williams. His second. Harper Williams, number 31, in fact, one of the players in the running for Atlantic 10 Player of the Year. John Shaney thought he should be. He nominated him after the win on Saturday, or Sunday, rather, at UMass. Had a very strong game in, in that. But he's, uh, he's, he's played very well. And here's another look at this play by Rutgers, uh, the foul on Harper. You see Worthy knows he's quicker, little shake and bake there, goes baseline, and Williams makes a cardinal mistake right there. He doesn't cut off the baseline. If you put your foot on the outside the baseline, the guy has to go through you so you get the offensive foul there. And you know it's going rough when Worthy can't cash in from the free throw line. Minutemen up 
19-5 and a tripping foul called on Mark Redden as Jim McCoy gets up off the deck. And the, the thing is, McCoy, you see how quick his first step was? Well, he has a very quick first step and causes a lot of problems for anyone who defends against him. Just 14 fouls on Rutgers as McCoy bobbles and Worthy there to collect. Steve Worthy always around the ball defensively. Daryl Smith to Weiler. Weiler over row and it won't go, but he's fouled. And they've got Will Herndon for his second. Yeah. Herndon's playing the center right now. Good leaper. I've seen this guy get up, and he, I mean, he just flat out, for his size, I mean, he's, he's only 6'3", but 220. Gets up like a gazelle. John Calipari says, he's my big play guy. He's the only guy that can get up there and make that big shot, that can get that tip in, that can jam it home. Right now, Chuck Weiler trying to convert the second, missing the first. Weiler got a great free throw shooter at 56%. A sarcastic cheer from the faithful here at Piscataway. I'm sure no one here came out, figured they were going to see a good game. And Ruckus has been very poor. Now Worthy ahead of the field. Oh! That sums it up. Worthy had the jam go in and out. And that's just how this half has been for Ruckus. Wenzel up on his feet clapping and trying to encourage his team. That could be a disastrous miss by Steve Worthy. Drive a stake in their heart, misses a jam ahead of the pack. And the thing is, it was wide open. He, no, he, never, he hardly ever misses those, and that's just how this half is going, very poorly. The crowd, though, still behind the Knights. The chant, let's go, are you, is Mike Jones. Drives into the lane, no, and there's Lewis Rowe collecting the rebound. Rowe has averaged about 20 minutes a game. Hasn't seen as much time as Jamal Phillips. There's Herndon to the basket, and he's fouled on his way to the basket. This could be very ugly if Rutgers doesn't settle down and work his way into a good shot. Maybe try to work a double screen in there somewhere and try to get someone wide open. Chuck Weiler picks up his first. Jamal Phillips back in the game. A top 100 recruit out of Brooklyn. First team all New York City, second team all New York State. And at the line, William Herndon. And the 63% free throw shooter misses the first of two. And, and Ruckets is probably breathing a sigh of relief that time. Someone missed the ball. <laughs> Herndon doesn't miss much from the floor. He holds the UMass field goal percentage career mark, 64% from the floor. Calipari says he doesn't take many shots he can't make, and he gets a lot of dunks. Well, that kind of helps the percentage out. <laughs> 20 to 6, 8.33 left in the first half. Worthy pumps a Walk. couple of times and walks. It seems like ever you pump fake a little too much, you get a little antsy, and your feet do that little one-two one step. Steve 0 for 5 from the field. And now Rutgers. I would think if you told Bob Wenzel you'd be at this point in the first half and UMass would have 20 points on the board, he'd feel pretty good about it. <laughs> but he's got only six at the offensive end. UMass likes to play in the 80s. In fact, they're 18 and 1 when they score more than 70 points. Anton Brown, no. And there's Mark Redden. Redden from Massachusetts. And he's fouled by Anton Brown. Brown with his first. Ninth on the Minutemen. Alvin Rich checking in for the Scarlet Knights. You know what Rutgers needs to do right now? We figure like this. Our games strategy is not working. 
Just throw it out. Just walk the ball up the floor. Kind of get UMass frustrated, get our players relaxed so we can get to the point where we can hit our shots. And it rattles around and falls. Redden, a 69% free throw shooter. Two-time independent school player of the year out of Dorchester, Massachusetts. Didn't stay home. Came down to New Jersey State University as we see Harper Williams back in the ball game. We can't get both to fall. It's been that kind of night. And the Knights are down by 13. Under eight minutes to play in the first half. But the good thing about it is always two halves in basketball. If you play bad the first half, you can kind of redeem yourself in the second half. But Rutgers digging itself a deep hole. Harper Williams fouled by Daryl Smith on his way to the glass. Rutgers has a small team in, but a quick team. What they maybe should do is go with a little bit more height. And like I said, just try to pound it in there. Spread these guys out. Make these guys play a little defense. Or, and it, I forgot, they are playing defense. That's what hit us scored. An evil eye from Bob Wenzel directed in the direction of uh, Gene Monjay. Boy, he feels that he's not getting the, getting the calls. Williams makes them both, and a timeout on the floor. Rutgers hasn't scored a field goal since the 18-11 mark of the first one by UMass. And Rutgers trying to put together a drive. The Minutemen, no strangers to playing some good defense in the first half. They held Rhode Island to 15 in the first half, and Temple to 20 points in the second half. Alvin Rich. Rutgers seem like they have a set play. He had to give, get a good shot in there. Smith blocked by Rowe. Back out to Redden for three. That was a big basket that time. Rutgers needed that. Jerome Malloy, soft no. Rebound Alvin Rich. And you're right, that has to be emotionally uplifting for the Scarlet Knights as Redden can't get it to go, and over the back is Daryl Smith. 2 on Smith. Seven on the Knights. At that time, getting a little anxious, saw the ball there, and just went right over the back. You know, I kind of, I can see what Redden was thinking the last time he took that shot. I just hit one, I feel it, let me try this one. And unfortunately, it bricked. Chuck Weiler back in, as is Steve Worthy, replacing Rich and Smith. Steve Worthy from Trenton High School, Trenton, New Jersey, is Anton Brown. One and the bonus. Anton Brown likes to play against Rutgers. He had a career-high 26 points against the Scarlet Knights back in January of 1989. Good free throw shooter. He makes them both. And the Minutemen are up by 14. Anton Brown with his average already in the first half, nine points. And just down that court, you can see uh, Jamal and Lou little jab in. So it should be interesting. And there is the ball going inside to Jamal Phillips, and he's fouled by Lewis Rowe. First on Lou Rowe. It's, it's funny to see these um, Jamal Phillips and Lou Rowe go against each other. But these guys are going to be playing together against each other for the next <laughs> three years. Here's where they working it inside for Phillips. Yes, the Phillips doing a good job keeping Rowe on his back. Reached over and drew the foul. Phillips, one of four from the free throw line. Oh, baby. One of five. That was a tough one. He's not a very good free throw shooter, but he's working on it. It's one thing. You know, it's not like someone goes out there to miss free throws. You know, he does work on it. It would be one thing if he didn't work on it. 
misses them both, but it goes out to Mark Redden. And there's the lane, it opened up, and Jamal Phillips misses the jam. That's three blown dunks for the Scarlet Knights here in the first half. And as they say, when it rains, it pours. Chuck Weiler with the block. He leads the Atlantic 10 in that category, and he got a piece. He came into the game with 70 blocks, number one in the Atlantic 10, fifth on the Rutgers all-time list. Not getting as many as he did in the beginning of the year, but still, still leading the league. He's up to four-plus a game. your story 24 10 Massachusetts Lumpkins in as is worthy Redden Weiler and Daryl Smith Weiler Chuck Weiler gets it to drop inside and it's a 12 point lead for the Minutemen one good thing about this this crowd every little basket the Rutgers puts in they're going to be all over it because they just want something positive to happen in this game Jerome Malloy Spins and scores. Two points for Malloy, a freshman from Waterbury, Connecticut. So he's an offensive threat. Worthy lowers the shoulder. Flash for two. Four points for Steve Worthy. And there's the reach in from behind by Worthy as Mike Williams had him beat by his step. You see the crowd, kind of, the crowd is sensing something. Rutgers hit their last two baskets. And quickly, we, we have some substitutions by UMass. Jim McCoy comes in for Jerome Malloy. And Mike Williams, a freshman from Hartford, Connecticut. John Calipari looks to Michael Williams. He says, for my... But I want to turn a game into a rat race. I put Williams in. <laughs> he's a penetrator. He's a slasher. He makes the first. He's only a 47% free throw shooter. Three-time All-State out of Weaver High School in Hartford. Who prepped the year at Maine Central. Cans them both. And we've got another substitution as Anton Brown checks in for the shooter, Mike Williams. Williams with a deuce, and Rutgers down by 14, 524 left in the first half. The Minutemen who trail West Virginia by a game in the Atlantic 10 race. And you see the change up in defenses by UMass. They go to a 1-3-1, try trying to give more problems to Rutgers, and it does. Worthy has the problem with the dribble, and Will Herndon quickly ahead to Tony Barbee. McCoy flashes out high, and now they'll reset with 30 on the shot clock. McCoy to Barbie. Backs away from Lumpkin and hits. Good post up that time by Barbie. Taking Five. over Lumpkin. Five points for Tony Barbie. He averages 12 a game. John Calipari said that Barbie hasn't shot the ball as well as he'd like to play, but he's a steadying influence, and he rebounds as well. There's another Rutgers turnover as Lumpkin loses it on the drive to the basket. McCoy blocked by Lumpkin, who stepped over the end line as he made the play. But good hustle, and that's what you like to see at both ends of the floor from Lumpkin. Yes, I mean, he has the potential to do that. He's done that in the last few games where he's been, where he's been playing well, shooting well. He usually lets the defense key his offense. Tonight, he let his offense try to key his defense, so hopefully now he can settle down, play good, aggressive defense, and now maybe his offense will take over. Lumpkin gets up against McCoy. And Mark Redden sits down Damon Santiago, the freshman, into the ball game. Here's Will Herndon had a clear lane to the hoop. Maybe he caught a little bit of what Rutgers has been catching. <laughs> Try to be a little too fancy that time, though. Worthy tries to drive. How did and the foul? I mean, talking about slash and move. That was a great move that time by Worthy. Right, left, right, layup. Easier said than done, though. Worthy now with six points. Here's another one. Well, it's good we get another look at it. Goes around one player, then another, and another. Goes around three guys to get that layup. I mean, that's talking about one in a basket bad. And Will Herndon 
picking up his third foul. Worthy to the line to complete the three-point play. Lewis Rowe is back in the ball game for Massachusetts. Worthy, he gets it. And it's the Minutemen by 13 as Wenzel directs the defense. Rutgers is slowly crawling their way out of the hole. There's Worthy. Had a piece nearly the steal, but Rowe collects. Barbie, another three-pointer short. Santiago to Worthy. This time, counted in the foul. Worthy wasn't going to jam it, Roy. No, he didn't want to take a chance. The jam was on the back of his mind as he was going in. But what he did was he let the guy go by him, foul him as he was going by him, and put the ball in for, for two. Anton Brown picked up the foul, his second, and they're on their feet here at the Athletic Center. Not quite the three that young man is hoping for, but a <laughs> three-point play the old-fashioned way, as Steve Worthy earns it here. As we see him, he's looking to see Anton Brown right, right up his left shoulder. He goes in strong, puts the ball in as he completes the three-point play. Rutgers down by 10, 337 left in the first half. And here's the sixth man now in the ball game as the rack pack is on its feet. And Jim McCoy looks things over and gets it off to Harper Williams. Here's Jerome Malloy. Nice move inside. And that silences the crowd. Rebuilding a 12-point lead for the Minutemen. It silences them for a little while, but the crowd is still on their feet and is still real vocal. Santiago, three-point shot by Damon Santiago. And Rutgers cuts it to nine. They're coming back in this game slowly but surely. That's how you do. You don't do it one, one basket at a time. I think the crowd is starting to rattle you, man, some. Anton Brown resets. They look down low, swatted away by Mike Jones as he fired the shot by Malloy out of bounds. And the defense is picking up because the crowd, the sixth man, the factor is in the game. 223 with 227 left. Rutgers. Playing the 10th toughest schedule in the country, according to the RPI computer, the computer used by the NCAA. Here's a look at Mike Jones doing it at the defensive end. Yes, got away with a little foul there, wrapping his hands up, but enough to get the block, send it out of there, and Santiago made a valiant effort at the end of that that we didn't see to try to save it. The UMass but. He you can't get away with one, though. Jerome Malloy oh, got away with a big one. Up. <laughs> Here we go, the Minutemen to inbound. McCoy to trigger. On high to Anton Brown. 15 on the shot clock. Here's Harper Williams. Jammed in by Lewis Rowe. Wipe it out, says Gene Monge. Offensive goaltending. It was still in the cylinder. You gotta let it come past the front of this rim before you jam it back in there. And so the Scarlet Knights get another stop. Here's a quick look. And as we see, it's still in the cylinder. He just pushes it back through. That ball had a chance of going right back in the basket. That would count an international play where you can offensive goal 10. Right, all it has to do is touch the rim. And Mike Jones fouled by his matching number, Jerome Malloy. Malloy's first. And you see a confident look come over the Rutgers Scarlet Knights' faces. They seem like they're getting this. They settled down some. They realize they can play with this team if they just stay calm, keep their poise, and just hit shots that they're capable of making. Mike Jones, 72% from the free throw line. With two points tonight. Jones played his high school ball at nearby Pensbury High School across the river from Trenton. Been bothered of late by a sore groin. Here's 
hit him because he wears like a girdle to keep the keep it kind of compact. <laughs> and they really give him a lot of grief about that girdle. <laughs> Players can be very tough. Eight-point lead for the Minutemen. Make it 11 as Jerome Malloy drains the three-point shot. He's got seven. When you have four guys who have over 1,000 points, one with 2,000, and some good quality freshmen, you can't let anyone on this team alone. Mike Jones draws the foul on Malloy. As you say, Malloy only a freshman, getting his start on the way to 1,000 career points. Freshman, but he's labeled as a very good three-point shooter, offensive threat, and just an all-out scorer. Not a streak shooter. He's different between a streak, a streak shooter like a Darnell Lumpkin and a scorer, someone who can just fill it up. They can mix it up as far as just shooting from the outside. Now two or four from the free throw line work his way to get back to the charity strike. Finding his way up the career steals list at Rutgers. This is the second, and it's a 10-point lead for the Minutemen. He missed that one because he left the line too soon. When you shoot the free throw, you stay there and watch it through the basket. Steal by Worthy in traffic. Rutgers has numbers. Smith, no, tipped up. Kept alive, but back comes Jim McCoy for the Minutemen. The Minutemen push it up, and Mike Jones looks around and says, I didn't do anything. And he'll pick up his second, a little extracurricular after the play. Got a technical, a double technical foul. When a guy is being aggressive, the best thing to do is turn away, and if he keeps on, the referee will give him a technical foul. No one benefits by st standing toe-to-toe -to -toe and jawing at each other. Tom Lopes. Outstanding official, Levi Hazlitt in Jersey, quickly took control of the situation. Jim Wilson making the announcement. John Calipari getting the explanation. Jim McCoy. Sixty-four percent free throw shooter. MVP of the Great Alaska shootout for the Minutemen. They went up there and won the Great Alaska shootout. He makes them both. And McCoy, last time they played up in UMass, he was held, he had he had, had 17 straight games of double double figure scoring and he only scored seven. So I'm sure that's in the back of his mind, knowing that this team deed him up the last time out. Now shooting the two technicals. And UMass up 39-25, and now we'll go down to the other end as Steve Worthy gets ready to shoot the technicals for Bob Wenzel. We talk about the home court advantage in the Atlantic 10. Rutgers 26 and 7 here at the Athletic Center. 43 and 15 overall at the rack since it opened. And Worthy cashes in both. And now Tommy Lopes turns around to explain it after double technical. Yes, so the possession arrow. Minutemen, possession arrow favoring UMass. Fans behind us didn't agree, but that was the call. That looked to turn to the crowd and to us. There's Harper Williams and Chuck Weiler. Yes, because in normal situations, they would have a jump ball, but since they went to the possession arrow, you give the ball to the team that has possession at the time. Weiler picks up his second. And Harper Williams at the line to shoot two. The contest with 1,042 points has four so far tonight. Makes the second and a substitution. But Kennard Robinson comes in for the shooter, Harper Williams. 
So after that exchange, UMass up 40-27, 55 seconds left. Worthy gets a screen out high by Weiler. Inside and a foul inside. That time, Rev's doing a good job. The, the foul was there, even though as small as it was by Lou Rowe. But I thought that the foul was called mainly to keep control of the game as opposed to calling to, uh, for a strong, aggressive foul. I don't know. You know, it looks like all ball to me. But uh, maybe they saw something down low. You know, you always want to give the referees the benefit of the doubt because they're never wrong, right? <laughs> <laughs> Worthy with a dozen as it rattle around the rim and out. Bob Wenzel has gone to his bench. He substituted Jamal Phillips for Chuck Weiler. There's Tony Barbie into the ball game. So Wenzel not wanting Weiler to pick up his third foul, which is 47 seconds left in the first half. And well. <laughs> it wasn't pretty, but it went. And Rutgers is down by 12 with 40 seconds left in this first half. Bodies flying as Anton Brown hits the deck. Rowe goes on Phillips. No. Barbie and Jamal Phillips cleans the glass. Outlets to Santiago. Lobbing ahead. Santiago to Worthy for two. They had numbers. So you go right in. You don't back it back out and play for the last shot. You have numbers to score two, so you go right in there. Now you need a stop to, to kind of tap off the momentum. Here's a steal by Steve Worthy. And he lays it off. No thumb this time. Still in his mind. Rutgers down by eight. The shot at the horn is no good. Now the Scarlet Knights dug themselves in company climbing out but the UMass Minutemen have this streak going for them they're 18 and 1 when they lead at the half we'll see if Rutgers can overcome that streak we're at the half Rutgers trailing UMass 40 32 coming up a special edition of NJN News plus Ron Bernovich the commissioner of the Atlantic 10 right after this The Meadowlands Arena is the place to be on March 22nd to see the best in boys and girls high school basketball. Tie for first in the A-10. So this is a very important win for UMass, but even more importantly, is a big, it'll be a good win for Rutgers being down as much as they were in the first half, coming back to respectability in the beginning of the second quarter, second half, and now possibly winning the game. Rutgers have trailed by as many as 16 points in the first half as Worthy is fouled by Jim McCoy. Bob Wessel comes back with Redden, Jones, Weiler, Daryl Smith, and Steve Worthy. Jim McCoy picking up his second personal foul. McCoy on the court for UMass along with Lewis Rowe, Brown, Harper Williams, and Tony Barbie. Weiler, the left-handed hook won't go. Smith gives it to Weiler for a second try, and Chuck Weiler can't buy one in the paint. Weiler is not hitting that because when he gets it up there, he's kind of giving it that little flip action instead of just letting it roll off his fingertips. Out of bounds, UMass ball. Remember, the Minutemen are 18 and one when they lead at the half. We'll see if that stat holds up. There's Weiler with a good play inside, got a hand on it, knocked it out of bounds. A good foot cans inside there. Will Herndon with three personal fouls not getting the start in the second half for John Calipari. Well, UMass is so deep they can afford to do the luxury of doing that. There's the strip on Barbie and a foul inside and it goes on Mike Jones. Sounded like a lot of ball from here. Yes, a lot of ball by Steve Worthy, but Mike Jones, I believe they called him from probably pushing in the back. Three personals on Mike Jones now. Mike Jones sometimes gets himself in trouble by being over aggressive. Well, he's got 115 career steals, eighth on the all time list in Rutgers. Here's Harper Williams missing, and Steve Worthy collecting. Quickly to Mike Jones. Worthy 
who leads Rutgers, throws it away. Harper Williams had nothing to do but take the ball away from Worthy as he was wide open. See Worthy saw Daryl Smith from behind him and thought that he could just flip it to him. Good defense by UMass. Anton Brown extends the Minutemen lead to 10. It was very important in the beginning of the game, the coaches said, for Rutgers to play very physical. And they seem like they haven't been doing that because UMass is pushing him under at every chance. Harper Williams off the two misses by Mike Jones. Jones almost slipped it away from Anton Brown. Here's Tony Barbee, jump stop. No good, but a foul inside. Tom Scott whistling. You know, in this in a game of basketball, you always look for patterns to help ease your defensive load. And for me, what I see is every time UMass gets the ball, they want to pump fake and drive. So what I would do, I would try to contain and put a hand in their face and try to see what they can do from the outside before I let them cause problems by breaking me down or breaking down the defense by going, by going inside. And you saw Chuck Weiler sitting down with three personal fouls. Bob Wessel felt that Weiler had to exert himself down low tonight. Santiago also into the ball game for Mark Redden. And Weiler has been taking some, uh, been taking some shots, makeable shots, but they haven't been falling. And now, UMass up by 12. Jamal Phillips in the ball game, replacing Chuck Wiley. Worthy gets a step on McCoy. Good move to the basket by Steve Worthy as he got around Harper Williams, and he's got 19 points. And he's doing a good job of help keeping these guys in. After his, it really wasn't a horrendous start, but he missed a couple of key plays. He's doing a good job. McCoy, no. Jamal Phillips says he was knocked out of bounds. Tommy Lopes says it'll be UMass ball. They won't call that foul. If the referee does not see you being pushed out of bounds, he won't call it. So it's best to try to keep your balance and look for a man to who you can throw it to if you're falling out of bounds. Jerome Malloy and Will Herndon into the ball game for the Minutemen. There's Malloy with the ball. Barbie guarded by Worthy. Barbie gets by Worthy. Phillips comes out to help. And Mike Jones grabs the rebound. Jones averaging 4.5 rebounds a game. Daryl Smith. Rutgers scoring in transition. So he took it to the basket strong. Thought he was going to dunk, but laid it up. Good presence of in, where you're at in the air. And again, it's an eight-point game. Rutgers in the midst of a key nine-game stretch, according to Bob Wenzel, as Malloy misses. It began against Temple, a game Rutgers lost. Last week, they pulled off an upset at West Virginia, then, as Wenzel said, avoided the upset against St. Peter's. And an offensive foul as Worthy tried to dish inside. Harper Williams paid the price and drew the foul. Worthy that time a little out of control. Good thought process of looking to penetrate and get that ball inside. But you got to know that it's, hard, it's tough to go past that free throw line and make a pass without somebody taking a charge on you. So Alvin Rich into the ball game. Also feels Rich can explode at any time. He'd like to see an explosion now. Anton Brown lobs inside, and it's completed by Will Herndon. And this is pretty much the first time we've really seen some good leaping ability by, by Herndon. He's got three points. Here's Smith, lays it off inside to Jamal Phillips. And a foul inside. Whistled against Tony Barbie. That's three on Barbie. And that gets Jim McCoy up off the bench. McCoy, UMass, excuse me, Royal, UMass's all-time leading scorer. He's 
Steve Darrell coming in, does a dribble penetration, kicks to Jamal Phillips, who goes up and gets fouled on the hand. Phillips now one and seven from the free throw line. You know, he works on this, as I said, in practice a lot, but he's gonna have to spend the whole summer working on his free throws because he plays inside. And playing inside, you're gonna get a lot of fouls called on you. And these are giving points. You gotta make these. Well, he makes the second. It's only his second point of the evening, and Phillips has been a force of late for Rutgers. McCoy answering at the other end for two. He's got eight points now. And Jamal Phillips averaging almost 14 points a game the last six games. He fought for the rebound, and he picked up the foul. As he towers. <laughs> oh, to 20 for Lou Rowe, but Phillips with two points tonight, and Lewis Rowe with just one. Apparently, Lewis Rowe can come along more slowly for this experienced Minutemen team. Mike Williams turns it over. Here's Daryl Smith. Off glass. It looked like Daryl lost control of it. They re regained control of it and almost was to the basket. Four points for Daryl Smith. Rutgers down by nine, and Bob Wenzel up off the bench saying, let's go, let's play some defense. We've still got a chance. Jim McCoy, hard to the basket, count it. He was sandwiched by Jamal Phillips and Daryl Smith. And he's a small guy, but he just powered that up in there. <laughs> it goes on Phillips, his second. And again, as soon as McCoy gets it, he dribble penetrates and powers it in between Jamal Phillips and Daryl Smith. Ten points for Jim McCoy. You know, I'm surprised no one from, on the Rutgers camp, Rutgers has really found out that these guys do nothing but dribble penetrate. Well, he misses the attempt for the three-point play, and Alvin Rich has to turn it back out. Okay, Roy, how do you stop that dribble penetration? So just keep your man in front of you, contain, slough in. Steven Santiago with a three-point basket, his second of the night. Pulls within eight. Malloy, short. Rebound by Harper Williams. Lost as Santiago comes away with it. He slow it down. He doesn't have numbers. Worthy. Stops, pops, no. Phillips and Rich fight for it, but it's taken away by Williams. Williams, travel with the ball. Credit the defense of Daryl Smith on that turnover. I tell you, big men should never handle the ball unless they have that capability. What he should do is just try to clear himself with his body, quick outlet pass. You see he's swinging his arms around, but he's out of control still. He should plant his feet and just try to look for an outlet pass. Daryl Smith had a piece of the ball, and as Harper Williams fought away from the grasp of Smith, he was called for traveling. Rutgers down by eight. Santiago slips in a hoop, and it's a six-point UMass lead. Santiago with eight off the bench. Oh, he got away with a walk that time. McCoy misses the jam, but it's up and in by Tony Barbie. Barbie saved that one. Ruckus has, has to do a better job of checking out. They allow their men to slip around and get those easy tippings. Here's Worthy. Offensive foul at three on Steve. That was a tough call that time. Looked like a pretty good spin move. Well, Bob Winston said it. We know how he felt. Unbelievable, he said. Boy, well, he had a great view of it, and he didn't see, even, he did not see how he could call something like that. Now the Minuteman with an eight-point lead in the ball. Mike Williams handling. McCoy flashes out, short. Rebound Santiago. Ahead to Worthy. Up last for two. Steve Worthy with 21 points. Cuts it to six again. And a 
battle for position on the low blocks between Mike Jones and Tony Barbie. And Jones whistled for the foul. That's four on Mike. Jones that time had his back in the small of Barbie's back. So every time he wanted to straighten up, Mike would push him over or he gave that appearance. And that's why the referee called that foul. Alvin Rich will replace Mike Jones. Jones with nine points. And Alvin Rich as Eddie Jordan. One time Scarlet standout. Talking with Mike Jones. Jones has had to play the forward spot this year. Converting from the guard spot. And Barbie makes the first. Well, he's done a good job uh, in his conversion playing both guards and forwards. But because of his quickness, he can do that. Tony Barbie makes one and the bonus as the Minutemen are shooting one and ones with 13.06 left in this one. And they're back up by eight. Santiago, who has been a pleasant lift off the bench. Rich sets beyond the three-point line. Daryl Smith, offensive rebound. Right up. Count it. And a foul on Barbie, but no. A debate. Gmon Jay says traveling. Tommy Lopes has one call. Gene Monjay has a difference of opinion. Monjay on the right. Lopes on the left. And Wenzel. The travel is out overruling the foul call. Because he walked, what the referees are saying, he walked before the foul was, was actually, had actually taken place. Wenzel is livid. Lopes made the call right in front of him. Monjay came from in front of Bob Wenzel out beyond the three-point arc and overruled Tommy Lopes. Personally, I thought it was a good call because I thought he did walk first. Now Alvin Rich guilty of the foul. Monjay has him. Picking up his second. And Rutgers now with 18 fouls. Minutemen will begin a parade to the free throw line. You think the referees can get out of here without a without an escort? It's tough right now. Tony Barbie makes the first. Rutgers Atlanta. University School of Higher Learning. Voicing their opinion, exercising the First Amendment. <laughs> now Donnell Lumpkin checks in. Lumpkin hasn't got it going from outside yet. And Barbie makes the second to silence the crowd and put the Minutemen up by 10. Well, Rutgers came, Lumpkin came in when Rutgers was kind of struggling and he forced a few shots so Bo Bo Coach Bob Winslow had to take him out of the game. Phillips back to Santiago. Jamal. A crowd of Knights in front of the bench. Lumpkin for three. No. Rebounded by Lewis Rowe, who grabbed that one with authority. Record, uh, Lumpkin that time missing and is unable to score. And all his shots that he's taken have been for three. And the foul is right there. So. He only gets two, in, as far as I know. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you, you, get the, you get the three in the NBA, right? <laughs> we call that a pro step. We don't call that a <laughs> That's right. That call ignited the crowd and Bob Wenzel. And right now, with 11.53 to play here in the second half, Rutgers down by 10. They had cut it to six twice. The Minutemen to inbound. Turnover is about even. Harper Williams gets it into Anton Brown. Usually, in a timeout situation like that, a coach would come back with a, a, a set play. Williams over Phillips for two. 
Executed. Two points. Seven points for Harper Williams. Averaging 13.9 points a game currently in 13th place in the Atlantic 10 in scoring. Here's Lumpkin. Picks up the loose ball and nails it. Very important. His first three-pointer, first basket. So hopefully he sees how he was wide open on that one, so that was a good shot. All his, the rest of the shots have been forced. Daryl Smith got a piece, but it's UMass ball. Now Jamal Phillips will check out. Chuck Weiler back in the lineup. And Lumpkin will play the figure man at 6-8. Kennard Robinson almost lost the handle. And here's Will Herndon. Williams to Herndon. Wow. Somehow he double clutched and avoided the potential block by Worthy for the deuce. And got fouled the boot, I thought. Five points for Will Herndon. UMass up by 11. To the hoop. No basket. But the foul called on Jim McCoy. And Damon Santiago will go to the line. Three on Jim McCoy. And Damon Santiago. With Mike Jones coming in for Steve Worthy. Santiago. 56% from the free throw line. With eight points this evening. Done a great job coming off the bench. Adding that nice little spark, something that Rutgers des desperately needed. And that gets the deficit to 10. Santiago out of Adlai Stevenson High School in the Bronx. Played for the Gauchos, the gym team. Has made 10 starts and averaged 22 minutes a game in his first season with Rutgers. He's in double figures with 10 points. And Rutgers is down by nine. Santiago knocked it away from McCoy, but right there is Harper Williams. And you see McCoy is being smothered by all defenders trying to keep him out of the game. But Harper Williams has nine points. 10 minutes left in the second half. McCoy comes out to play Santiago. Off to Weiler. Chuck Weiler fouled on his way to the basket. Weiler crashes to the floor. And the foul will go on. Harper Williams. His third. Harper Williams bailed Weiler out because the ball flipped out of his hand as he was going to the basket. You know, at, you know, at the center position, it looks nice when you can block a shot. But the best thing to do in most cases is just go up straight up and down and let the offensive man cause contact. Wilder, one of two from the free throw line. That's why he's 56% for the charity stripe for the season. You know, he has a, a real soft release. Every shot is always straight. When he misses, it's either... Too, too long or too short. Chuck Wilder, who played at Haddonfield High School, helped Haddonfield win a group one championship. Misses them both. And there's Williams getting it to Anton Brown. And Brown has it blocked by Wilder. That is one thing that Chuck Wilder does very well is block shots. The leader in the Atlantic 10. And Lewis Rowe fouls Damon Santiago as Santiago drove to the hoop strong. He saw the whole thing set up. UMass retreating back. Defense unsettled. He saw an opening, took it, and was fouled. Four now on Lewis Rowe. And Jim McCoy takes a seat as Jerome Malloy there checking in. Two-time All-State from Kennedy High School in Waterbury, Connecticut. Good outside shooter. As is Steve Worthy, who powers inside. Worthy 
wanted it from the outset. He's got 23 points and Rutgers within nine. Rowe. This time he's jumped for the rebound, but there's Herndon as the Minutemen reset. Jerome Malloy, no, rebound Mike Jones. Santiago. Off to Daryl Smith. Oh. Play. We're talking both guys are up there. And you see the, the pass. Herndon went for this all the way, and Darrell was right in there. Quick dunk him for two. Four personals on Will Herndon. And you know, Roy, before the telecast, Darrell Smith was talking about it. He's been practicing one of your dunks in practice. <laughs> well, I tell you. That was a pretty impressive dunk right there. And Daryl Smith does complete the three-point play. He's got seven points. And Rutgers, for the third time in the second half, cuts the minute and leads to six. Malloy inside amidst the trees. Wilder couldn't get to it. And it's back to eight. Look, every time they get close, you might think UMass comes back and hits a bucket. They're going to have to concentrate more on making a stop when they get the, get the game down to six so they can keep cutting into the lead. Santiago, who moments ago fed Daryl Smith. Air ball, and it's rebounded by Will Herndon. A little, little bit too much one-on-one -on -one basketball right there. Mike Williams at the point. Here's Tony Barbie. Herndon wanted it moments ago, didn't get it, and now they reset. Mike Williams, no, rebounded to Damon Santiago. Two on two. And Santiago will pull it back out. Wisely resetting. Smith. Back out to Santiago. That's his spot for three, not this time. And Mike Williams. The freshman from Hartford. And you can tell the way he's his moving with the ball, he's quick as a cat. The penetrator, guarded by Mike Jones, and Jones. Is that five? I believe that is five on Mike Jones. See, this is where Mike Jones makes big, big mistakes. He knows he has four, but he keeps playing his same aggressive defense, his gamma style, and he gets his, whew, as he kicks the chair. Chair paid the price. <laughs> Bobby Knight threw one further than that, but Mike Jones <laughs> in the other direction. One in frustration. And he knows that was a stupid play on his part. Gambling. Always know the situation in the game. And it's Mike Williams at the line to shoot. One and one. And he's now three for three from the free throw line. Jones fouls out with four points. And Mike Williams, who had a career high 13 against Duquesne. Unable to convert the bonus. And the Minutemen leading 65 56, seven and a half left in this one. Steve Worthy trying to lob inside to Danelle Lumpkin. And it's Jerome Malloy picking up his third. Some good fakes, but as he as Steve Worthy was faking, Herndon was kept backing off of him. And Lumpkin, an outstanding free throw shooter for Wenzel at 85%. Bob Wenzel's first all-state recruit out of South Brunswick High School. At the line. Here's Worthy. Offensive rebound off the miss by Lumpkin. No. And it's Williams. Lumpkin rarely misses. Last game out, he missed two in a row, which is, un which is unheard of for him. Malloy couldn't get it to go down as Chuck Weiler changed the shot. Santiago for Lumpkin. Off 
glass, no. He got banged into on his way to the basket by Harper Williams. Changed him up just enough. You saw him, he's wide, on, wide open underneath. That time Daryl Smith lost his man. He went straight up. 6.34 to play. As Steve Worthy walks it up, Rutgers trailing by 11. Santiago, Lumpkin, short with the three-point try, and Barbie with the rebound. Well, Lumpkin, you know, he doesn't, he's not showing enough movement to get that three-point three shot. Anton Brown has it flicked away by Worthy. Worthy runs out of bounds trying to save the ball, so Worthy trying to come up with a steal down the stretch. Well, they had possession, but neither guy really went for the ball. He thought the other one had it, and Steve Worthy made a gallon effort trying to save it. John Calipari never stops coaching. Got the head coaching job here at UMass at 28 years old. And Jerome Malloy, good look with the left hand off glass. And UMass now up by 13. Malloy off the bench with 11 points. Continuing to get easy shots, UMass is. Rutgers has to look beyond the three-point arc. Lumpkin can't answer. Phillips tipped it, but Anton Brown grabs it for the Minutemen. UMass with four losses this season as Lumpkin picks up a foul against Lewis Rowe. They won the Great Alaska Shootout, defeating Santa Clara, Oregon State, and New Orleans. They're also 2-0 against the Big 8. They beat Oklahoma 86-73. And Iowa State 73-53. You know, the Atlantic 10 is 3-1 against the Big 8. No other conference has been that successful against the Big 8. This year enjoying a very good year. And you have to understand what that means for the conference as a whole. Now the conference starts to get respect by beating those conference that was thought to be the premier conferences in the nation. Lewis Rowe now with three points. Bob Wenzel calling for the weave out high. 71-56, 515 left. Lumpkin dishes to Jamal Phillips who couldn't hang on. Mark Redden in, Santiago out for the Scarlet Knights. Santiago, who provided that lift with a couple of three-pointers. If you notice, the, the crowd is now quiet, and Rutgers is playing flat. They need to do something to get this crowd back into this game so they can start, you know, hopefully that will generate some excitement within themselves. Harper Williams shut off by Phillips. And they were jostling inside, and it's going to go against Harper Williams. Three on Williams. And UMass over the limit, so Rutgers shooting a one and one. 18 fouls on the Minutemen. And Jamal Phillips, the right man to send to the free throw line. Two of eight, which is two points tonight. Jamal Phillips had really picked it up. He had a career high 18 points at UMass. It was averaging just under 15 in the last six games. This is the front end of the one and one. The problems continue for the freshman. Here's Williams. Anton Brown. A two-point attempt for Anton Brown. He knocks it down. He's got 13 points. And unbelievably, he's wide open when he shot that. I mean, no one within within five is definitely favoring Rutgers in that respect. But UMass is a very good team. Looks like on their way to winning this game. Lumpkin spins at the foul line for two. Donnell with five points. You know, I've seen quite a bit of Lump Lumpkin this season, last season, and I think he's a better 
player when he's inside the three-point. You know, he likes he, he's a long-range shooter, but he's streaky from the outside. But I think he's better going inside the three-point. And here's Lewis Rowe taking it to the hoop and pulling up. He's got five points, the freshman from Atlantic City. Showing us things that come in the next three years. Smith trying to hook up with Phillips. No, but Redden able to grab it. Lumpkin, bullet pass to Jamal Phillips. That time, squared up to the basket. It did a good job faking, turn, taking a turnaround jump shot. If he can just lose that dribble and just make a quick move, he can become more effective. Four points for Jamal Phillips. Now Williams tries to go one-on-one -on, -one on Jamal. You know, UMass has a lot of gifted athletes on the team, but only one of them, that being McCoy, can really take it, take over a game and get his own shot whenever he wants. As we said, the only team with four active 1,000-point scores in the NCAA, according to the Atlantic 10 research, Ray Chella, and a turnover by Jim McCoy. He thought he got, he, was, he just said he was pushed, well, that's the game of basketball, you know, contact. This is not a non-contact sport. But this one in the books for UMass as they lead by 17. Redden scoops no rebound, Lou Rowe. Starts it to Anton Brown, three on one. Brown blocked by Lumpkin. Here's Daryl Smith. The reverse jam by Daryl Smith. He's got nine points. But it's a little late for the Knights. Yep. I can, I can honestly say, not unless Rutgers makes a strong push, you can pretty much write this one in. Unless they come up with a five-point play. <laughs> and now UMass is doing a good job taking some time off, knowing that they don't need any more points to score. UMass, one of the keys early in the game was to keep Rutgers under 70 points, and they look like they're on their way to doing that tonight. Jamal Phillips picks up the foul. Three on Jamal. Chuck Weiler comes back into the ball game. And at the line, Jimmy McCoy, seventh in the Atlantic 10 in scoring. Bob Wenzel having some words of encouragement for his freshman. McCoy with 10 points. Trying now to get back to that average here in garbage time. The thing is, he, he struggled all night long. Last game, he only scored seven. So Rutgers poses problems for him. The thing is, I feel sorry for the next team that they have to face because then he probably light it up. Second rolls out. Jim McCoy was the leading scorer returning in the Atlantic 10 as Lumpkin misses from three-point range. UMass picked to win the league, according to all the preseason prognosticators. All right now, a win tonight. And if West Virginia loses against Rhode Island, the Minutemen will move into a first-place tie with the Mountaineers in first place. And a travel by Tony Barbie with 111 left. John Calipari <laughs> contesting every call, coaching every dribble. The only way to stay sharp, though, keep it going, coach the game like you're losing. Well, you know, he inherited a team that, in a program that had 10 straight losing seasons as Daryl Smith jams in the rebound. Smith now with 11 points. Calipari had been an assistant at Kansas, Vermont, and Pittsburgh. In fact, used that Pittsburgh connection to get Lou Rowe out of Atlantic City. Lewis Rowe, a cousin of Bobby Martin, and John Calipari was one of the pit assistants who recruited Bobby Martin to Pittsburgh. There's Harper Williams. You know, speaking of Pittsburgh, they got their clocks clean the other night for Seton Hall, another New Jersey school. Pirates on a roll. They've won five straight in the Big East. Mark Redden, a three-point basket. And all these look good at the end of the game, but when the, night, when the Knights were down early, 
you know, these baskets were nowhere to be found. Well, UMass beat Rutgers 77-66 last time out. Harper Williams puts the exclamation point on this one as UMass beats the Scarlet Knights 81-67. to Bob Wenzel and company slipping to 12-11, and 4-8 and in the Atlantic 10. UMass 21-4, 9-3 in conference play. Well, we hope you'll join us next Tuesday night live at 8 for a Northeast Conference battle. Fairley Dickinson taking on Monmouth. Thanks to our statistician, Denise Gormley, and to Rich Frischer. Again, we'll join you next Tuesday night live at 8 as the Monmouth Hawks entertain Fairley Dickinson. And so for Roy Hinson, I'm Pat Scanlon. Again, the final score, UMass 81, Rutgers 67. So long, everybody.